On my channel, I've been talking about the persecution of minority faiths and individual believers that either go against the state ideology or refuse to comply in some other way. The dominant and generally compliant Russian Orthodox Church has her own dissidents too. Those are not necessarily people who openly condemn the war, yet the policy that I call comply or goodbye is especially firm within the church. It is much harder to apply to an enormous number of laymen, most of whom only identify with the faith and don't live an active church life. But when it comes to clergy, the church leadership demands much more than silence and compliance. They demand total obedience. Since the start of the war in Ukraine, there have been a number of priests punished for attempting to go against the official church policy. However, most of them didn't speak up publicly or attended any protests or demonstrations. Their only crime has been a seemingly insignificant liturgical change that became a major scene in the current political climate and the position of the church leadership. So, what is that change and why some priests make it? Shortly after the start of the war, the Moscow Patriarchate sent a letter to all eparchies with the text of the new prayer to be read during the Divine Liturgy. The text was about the Holy Mother Rus and the restoration of peace in Ukraine. As I've repeatedly claimed on my channel, the Patriarch's position in the first days of the war was vague and undefined, but shortly after he became a loyal supporter of the regime and the Putin's war. Hence, after several months, in September 2022, he himself read and then distributed to all churches across Russia a new version of the prayer, which does not just call for peace, but specifically asks the Lord for victory. Some of the priests who doubt the Russian cause for the invasion in Ukraine, and yet who have tried to keep quiet under the threat of persecution, have now been put into the position of either saying the prayer that goes against their beliefs or directly violating the order of the patriarch. In the church trials that would follow, this is interpreted as not just liturgical misdemeanor, but as a violation of the oath that the priest gives during his ordination, to be obedient to the church and her patriarch. That way, defrocking, permanently dismissing a priest's title, is considered as the only appropriate punishment. There are many examples of defrocking and not all of them are presumably known to the public. I will just mention four most notable cases. First, the Moscow priest Ioan Koval was defrocked for actually saying this prayer but replacing the word victory with the word peace. For that he was convicted by the church court for the same crime, breaking the priest's oath. Notably enough, it was his frog who reported him to the church leadership. Last summer, the Universal Patriarchate of Constantinople formally restored his title and accepted him as a priest. proto iereus Alexei Uminsky refused to read the prayer for victory and was defrogged by the church court last January. He is a well-known liberal priest, media personality and openly pacifist. Shortly after his defroking, his title was also restored by the Constantinople Patriarchate. This conflict of the Moscow and Constantinople Patriarchates began over the Ukrainian Orthodox Churches back in 2018. Since then, two churches broke the Eucharistic Fellowship. See the video about Ukrainian churches on my channel. Another priest, Archimandrite Kirill Gavarun, was defrocked for breaking this rule and having a joint liturgy with the clergy of the Constantinople Patriarchate in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Gavarun has been a very influential priest, theologian, scholar, and he used to hold different positions in the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate. Lastly, Deacon Andrei Kuraev, whom I've mentioned many times on my channel. He is not just an opponent of the war and the Patriarch Kirill personally, he has always been one of the most known media figures, a blogger, Christian apologist, theologian, educator, and not in the least, a personal assistant to the previous Patriarch, Alexei II. For his anti-war position, Kuraev was fined, labeled a foreign agent, and eventually he was forced to emigrate to Czech Republic. He was also defrocked by the church for seemingly destructive activities and libel against the church. 
Before his defroking, Kuraev transferred to another Orthodox Patriarchate, but he chooses not to disclose which one exactly. As I have repeatedly said on my channel, the Russian religious policy nowadays is best described as comply or goodbye. This concerns not only minority faiths and open political opposition within the religious communities, but even the clergy of the dominant Russian Orthodox Church who fails to show full and unquestionable support to the political line chosen by the church leadership. Please like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. I see you all next time.